On the surface of an average planet, circling an ordinary yellow star, an advanced intelligence searches the skies for evidence of life. Directed by even higher intelligence, machines with brains of silicon patiently sift through faint shards of radio data for the unmistakable signal that will indicate the first sign of life beyond Earth. In 1959, physicist Philip Morrison was co-author of the first scientific paper to suggest a strategy for such a search. What I would like to know is an answer to a very simple question. Are we alone as conscious beings in this entire buzzing 400 billion star galaxy, one of 10 to the 10th other galaxies, it seems pretty implausible. It's an enormous task to search the skies for intelligent life, looking for a golden needle in a huge cosmic haystack. But SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, has come a long way since early experiments by young radio astronomer Frank Drake. In 1960, Drake made the first radio search from Green Bank, West Virginia. He called it Ozma, after a princess from the fictional land of Oz. Now plans for the most sophisticated SETI search ever focus on the Goldstone Deep Space Communication Complex in California's Mojave Desert. It is the site of tests for a possible future NASA project, one not yet funded. The full-scale NASA system, when operational in the next decade, would be billions of times more powerful than the sum of all previous searches. For Carl Sagan, a proponent of SETI for many years, this technical progress has made the present unique. For the first time, we're mustering substantial, sophisticated, serious uh, scientific searches for, uh, for extraterrestrial intelligence. There's never been a time like that before. So there is some chance that in the next few decades, we will get a signal from some spectacularly distant, spectacularly exotic civilization and everything on Earth will, as a consequence, change. That is possible. why, when, and whether to search for life beyond Earth has been debated for centuries. Deciding what sort of signal to look for in the skies is no easy task. NASA's proposed search focuses on radio, a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum where nature produces the least interference for any intelligent signal. The plan is to use existing radio antennas and combine them with advanced computer hardware and software specifically designed for the task. Signal processing equipment suitable for SETI is constantly becoming more powerful and more efficient, but also cheaper and smaller than ever before. In the mid-1990s, NASA hopes to deploy its systems in a relatively low-cost 10-year search that will, for the first time, systematically explore all the radio frequencies and directions on the sky that researchers think might reveal a signal. My name is Jill Tarter. I'm an astronomer from the University of California at Berkeley, and I work with colleagues from NASA's Ames Research Center, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and the SETI Institute to help design the special purpose tools needed to do SETI properly. Over the years, I've worked at many radio telescopes, like this one at Nancy in France, trying to adapt existing equipment to this difficult task. These efforts, I hope, will soon be eclipsed by the planned NASA system, some parts of which may eventually be placed here at Nancy. Contemporary SETI is a science, a discipline which transforms humanity's age-old speculations about life in the universe into experimental reality. SETI pioneer Frank Drake came up with a way to organize our developing knowledge and current ignorance. SETI scientists often use what's called the Drake Equation, to illuminate the necessary conditions for contact and to provide a rough estimate of the number of other civilizations. The existence of other technical civilizations, 
depends upon astronomy, how planets form, comparative planetology, biochemistry, the role of intelligence in evolution, technology, and the fate of technical civilizations. So SETI becomes a way to test our theories of the origin and evolution of the universe and the place of life within it. Some factors in the Drake equation are well determined, others are not. We're pretty sure our galaxy has about 400 billion stars, and maybe 10% of them will shine long enough for life to evolve. And we understand something of the life cycle of those stars. We know that it required colossal supernova explosions to transform the simple elements produced in the Big Bang into the heavy elements that form rocky planets and we ourselves. And we have taken the first steps in understanding the chemical origin of life and the principles of evolution. But as yet we found no definitive proof of solar systems beyond our own. Though recent observations of the disk of matter around the nearby star Beta Pictoris suggests that planets may be common. In our own solar system, we have found no signs of advanced life, though planets like Mars and the large moons like Europa and Titan may have provided suitable environments for life in the past, or may do in the future, and seem worth further exploratory missions. So far, we have detected no signals from other civilizations around other stars, using technologies which could make them visible across the light years. And we cannot predict whether civilizations with advanced technology will perish quickly or learn to use it to explore the universe and thrive for the lifetime of their star. Some people look at the seven conditions Drake proposed and see a weak chain that could easily be broken. Drake himself thinks there could be many thousands of civilizations with whom we could communicate in the Milky Way alone. Look at, so I take the solar system, which we know has happened, and the life on Earth as typical. And as far as we know, it is typical. We know of nothing, no freakish event that was required for us, with our motorcycles and our videotape recorders, to exist. SETI researchers, such as Harvard's Paul Horowitz, doubt that the question of other life in the universe will ever be answered in the abstract. People have argued for a long time about the odds. What are the probabilities that there's life elsewhere in the universe? And lacking any data, they're nothing but arguments. And you can argue yourself blue in the face. But if you want to answer this question, you're going to have to do the experiment. But how can you do the experiment? What is the right experiment? Over interstellar distances, there's little sign of Earth. The sun outshines the planet by more than a billion to one. That's one reason we've not yet seen planets around other stars with even the largest optical telescopes. It's rather like trying to see a firefly perched on the rim of a searchlight. But at radio wavelengths, at certain times and certain frequencies, Earth's technology outshines all other sources in the solar system by nearly a million to one. The carrier waves of Earth's radio and television broadcasts leak outward in a spherical shell and could be detected by distant civilizations. Radio signals travel at the speed of light, the fastest velocity possible. In contrast, Pioneer 10 has been traveling for nine years to cover some four billion miles, but its signal arrives back here on Earth in just five hours. That's one reason NASA researchers think it is communication, not physical travel, that makes most sense for all species everywhere in the universe. Earth's most sensitive antennas could detect strong signals from halfway across the galaxy. Traveling for just five light hours, Pioneer 10's very weak signal is being used to test NASA's prototype detectors back here on Earth. Barney Oliver, chief of NASA's SETI office. We're looking for a signal now that's coming from the Pioneer spacecraft. 